The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next, Lisa Bevere inspires women to avoid the same mistakes she made. So I picked my college, not according to my major, but according to who Playboy magazine had ranked as some of the top party schools, and that was University of Arizona. So I went out there, was wild, and I thought rebellion was freedom. And I just did everything and found out I had become the person I didn't want to be. We are so excited to have our dear friend Lisa Bevere with us. I'm Betty, and this is James. Well, and we do have a wonderful audience. You're, you're really mm -hmm. great. It's uh, it just it's super to see people in love with the Lord, and a lot of you really like uh, Lisa. You've, you've heard her, and uh, I invited friends to be here in person with her, and I can tell they're, they're glad they're here. <laughs> Lisa, we're glad you're here. We, the Thank first you. program where we talked about Really, the the book is a devotional book about strong, and you you really shared that, uh, you know, strong is not wrong, and wrong is not strong. It's not right, right. and uh, you just really took off, and and you we actually referenced that you taught here in the studio, uh, purity's power. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was, the studio audience was just filled with girls, and I could not believe how open and how honest you were. Yeah. I thought, dear God, but it, it was, <laughs> I just watched people change. I mean, it wasn't like there was not one thing out of place. I'm just thinking, God, how desperately we need to hear this. You know, when I had the first day with Betty, I came from a broken home. Mm -hmm. I lived in total poverty. I mean, I lived in the roughest neighborhood you can live in. Mm -hmm. And I went out with this girl. And I'm telling you, when I went back to the pastor's house where I was visiting and staying, I dropped down on my knees and I started crying. I was 15 years old. I said, God, I met a pure girl. Mm. I met a really pure girl. And if you remember, I told you, the next few times I was with you, it really got me. Because I, you know, I'd always wish there'd be girls like that. Of course, a lot of boys are wishing the girls wouldn't be like that. <laughs> but I thought, gosh, I don't want that kind of girl. And I told you, I said, you need to be strong because hmm. sometimes I won't be so holy. <laughs> and I want you to be real strong. And let me just tell you, strong is an understatement. I went with this girl four years. She makes Walker look like he ain't a ranger. He ain't got nothing to do with karate. He know nothing. This girl has got more defense moves than anybody on the planet. I will put a move on her now. And she'll say, I'm still strong. <laughs> You know, Lisa, you really, really helped a lot. And you you knew because of your own journey, and I know your story, mm -hmm. you, you, you didn't practice that until no. you met the essence of purity. Right. I know it's big to you, yeah. and it's big to you because you had four boys. Yes. All right, talk to us about purity because that's one of the strengths you talk about in this incredible devotion book. Yes. Well, and, and first of all, I mean, I think a lot of times the purity culture in the church has actually just heaped on more legalism. I agree. So we want to talk about purity in the sense of a pure devotion to God. That's correct. So I was not raised to be a Christian. I was raised to be an exceptional heathen. <laughs> I was uh, the kind of girl that you would not have liked and uh, the one that Betty was not. So I went away to college at University of Arizona because I found out it was the biggest party school. So I picked my college, not according to my major, but according to who Playboy magazine had ranked as some of the top party schools, and that was University of Arizona. So I went out there, was wild, and I thought rebellion was freedom. And I just did everything and found out I had become the person I didn't want to be. Hmm. And I remember between my junior and my senior year in college, driving home from, from school and 
on the back roads of Indiana and singing at the top of my lungs to make sure I could stay awake. ACDC, I'm on the highway to hell. And I thought, <laughs> I think I am. I think I might be actually exactly on that highway. I had nothing good. I brought nothing pure. And then I heard the gospel for the very first time. And I didn't hear a gospel of you have to be good. I heard about a good God. And when I heard about this God who loved me, who, who actually shared the gospel with me is now my husband of 38 years, but he was missionary day. I didn't know that was wrong. He didn't tell me that was wrong. And so he'd <laughs> taken me out because he had seen me at breakfast in a bikini top and cut off shorts that I had slid up to the waistband so that everybody knew I didn't have underwear on. I don't know why I felt like that was important for people to know, but at the time, you know, when you're a heathen, you're like, these are what you do. So anyway, I went out with John, first date. I thought about free food. That's why I went to a Bible study picnic. But there was a song where I looked at the words, because everybody was making me uncomfortable because they were raising their hands. I'm like, do you have a question? Like, why are, your hands, why are your hands in the air? I looked down, and there was a song that says that when God would look at me, he would no longer see me, he would see Jesus. Mm. And I had an awareness that I needed a covering. And so that night I went walking on the campus. John and I talked. I interrupted him. I said, I, I want to get born again. I, whatever this thing is, I want to do it. Wow. And he said, okay, I'm not done preaching. Then I started getting <laughs> scared that the rapture was going to happen because I'd seen the end of Thief in the Night. I was like, I'm going to lose my head. This guy's going to disappear in some cloud thing. But anyway, he did get to pray with me. And I got, he said, now you're saved. I said, what does that even mean? He said, it means you're whole again, spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of a journey towards wholeness. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't understand that the God that I went to church to meet cared about my sexuality. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that he cared about my body. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. Those were all things I didn't understand. And so what happened was I had squandered mm -hmm. my life and promiscuity. Mm -hmm. And now I met somebody mm -hmm. that I wanted to give everything to and I didn't feel worthy. Now, wow. John never made me feel unworthy, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel worthy. And so I remember we were living actually in Dallas at the time. I went walking around a lake, and I knew John was going to ask me to marry him. And I knew John was a virgin. And I thought, he doesn't deserve me. He deserves mm -hmm. someone better. He doesn't deserve somebody that's that squandered their life. And so when I met with John, I said, I need to talk to you. And I, he said, okay, but I need to talk to you first. He said, I was praying. And he said, God said that he sees you as a new creation. He said that the old things have passed away and behold, all mm -hmm. things have become new. And I said, but no, that's what you need to know. I'm, I'm, I'm like basically a hoe. And he was like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> if God says, if God says you're a new creation, yeah. then we are not going to argue with him. <laughs> and can I tell you something? That love does more to wash away shame and guilt than any list of rules ever could. And most people nowadays have had encounters that maybe they didn't want to have. Maybe they saw something on the internet. Maybe somebody took advantage of them. Maybe they've done things that they wish they hadn't. Or maybe they're so afraid they're shut down. So what we have right now is we have a generation in a sexual nightmare. And what we have done to respond to this nightmare is we've handed out a list of rules. And the rules go like, don't be afraid. Well, this is scary. There are no nightmares. There's no monsters. Yes, there is. And so I remember when my boys were little and they woke in the night and they had a nightmare. If John was gone, I put him in bed with me. And I sang them songs and I told them stories to put back to sleep what had been awakened mm. in the wrong manner. We have a generation of young men, young women, and I'm even sadly going to say old men, <laughs> old women, because it's coming in contact with everybody who has their sexuality awakened in the wrong manner. Absolutely. And when it is awakened in the wrong manner or in the wrong time, it awakens as lust, wow. and lust yeah. will drive you. It will shame you. It will drive you. Wow. And so what we need to do is put it back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Zephaniah 3.17 says, Lord, your God is mighty to save. 
This is what I love. He's, it's not about my strength. The Lord, your God, is mighty to save. Then it goes on to say, he will rejoice over you with singing. He will quiet you with his love. We've done the give them rules and we've done the no rules. And both of them have landed us into two ditches. It is time to press into God and say, God, I need you to save me from this nightmare I found myself trapped in, a nightmare of pornography, a nightmare of promiscuity, a nightmare where I feel like as a woman, I can't say no because I've said yes, or I can't say no because somebody took my ability to say no away from me. And God wants to put this back to sleep and legalism won't put it back to sleep and shame won't put it back to sleep and fear won't put it back to sleep. Only God can put it back to sleep. And that is what he did for me. He said, Lisa, I'm going to put back to sleep what is awakened in lust and I'm going to reawake it in intimacy and love. Could we just pause just a moment here? All of you at home, you heard so much truth come straight from God. Lisa, it's such a, it's, 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 it's as perfect as a person can say truth. Thank you. And it was said in as perfect and as pure a love as you can say it. And it was said totally redemptive, unconditional redemptive love. And Father, there are so many trapped. And boy, did she put it right. We are damaged goods. We've been exposed. Lord, David saw a woman bathing. And today, little boys can see women many more than one bathing, doing so many awful things that will grab their heart and capture them at all ages, both sexes, and they're trapped. And Lord, I pray you'd lift the shame off. And God, Lisa's put it so well, and you'd break the shackles and set them free. Yes. You're the only one who can do it. And let me just look at all of you in the studio and all of you here. He wants to do it. He's able to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't push yourself down. Don't put people down. Lisa, I don't know how you could have said it any better. Somehow, John evidently gets this too. Yeah. Because what you said, he has a lesson that he teaches about. Yeah, porn free. Mm -hmm. Porn free. Mm -hmm. Rather than born free, yeah. porn free. Mm -hmm. Oh, if, where would they get it? If they want to get it, go online, they go they get it. The... They can go to our messenger website and it's in our messenger courses. All right. Yeah. Here's the thing. God has put in, in you as both as a couple and your honesty. I don't, I don't, I hope all of you here in the studio realize what you heard was not natural ability. This was a supernatural divine enabling flowing through her. This was God speaking to men and to women through a woman. Do you agree, Betty? Excellent. As clearly, yes. as perfectly, as Christ-like, as, as non-condemning, as redemptively as you'll ever hear it. Lisa, you wanted to talk too, and all of yeah. this is these little points along this line are in this incredible book yeah. about being strong, owning up and letting go. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then she has this little statement at the end of every one, when I own my mistakes and accept the mercy I don't deserve, that's when I'm strong. Yeah. I'm strong when I own my mistakes mm -hmm. and accept the mercy I don't deserve. Yeah. God has given you a supernatural gift. I pray you increase it, mm -hmm. Lord, in both mm -hmm. Lisa and John. Mm -hmm. I pray you help them guard their time, their yes. thoughts, their actions. Yes. And Lord, continue to let them be a beautiful channel through which you just flow your life and your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. You wanted you wanted to talk yeah. about virtue. Yeah. So <laughs> virtue is powerful. And there's people that have lost their virginity that maybe it was stolen from them, or maybe they didn't even understand the value of it, but they can still recover their virtue. And we get our virtue, which is this force from God. And one of the women that I feel like captures this better than any other woman is the woman in John 8. The woman obviously guilty woman caught caught in adultery i was an obviously guilty woman so as an obviously guilty woman i needed to know what jesus would say to her mm. and when you look at this interaction you've got the pharisees you've got the crowd that's the observer then you have jesus making his statement that everybody loves to quote you who are without sin first st cast the first stone they go away it says one by one the oldest ones first because the older you are, the more you know you need mercy. They go away until it's just the woman 
Jesus and the crowd. And Jesus asked her, he says, where are your accusers? Are there any left? And she's like, they're gone. Now, this actually really shocked me because if I was that woman, obviously guilty, maybe wrapped in a bed sheet, as soon as the last person that could throw a stone, I'd be like, thank you, Jesus, I'm out of here. But this woman waited because she was not content to hear what Jesus said about her. She was waiting till Jesus spoke directly to her. And when he looked at her, he said, neither do I condemn you. Mm -hmm. And then he said, go and sin no more. And there's a chapter break, but there really shouldn't be because it says when Jesus spoke again, he said, I am the light of the world. See, we need to have a generation that hears. When Jesus says, go and sin no more, he's not saying, you do this again, you're under a pile of stones. He is saying, I am the light of the world. I am the one who empowers you to leave shame and shadow. And you walk in me and you will no longer walk in darkness. And you'll know the truth and when the you truth. abide in me mm -hmm. and it makes you free. Absolutely. And this is the freedom he offers all of us, not condemnation. Lisa, just thank you. I, I hope you'll get this incredible book that just touches on all the areas of strength that we all need. Thank Would you. you like to say thank you, God, and thank you, Lisa, for sharing. <laughs> Thank you for trusting God as your strength. And uh, I believe we could show everybody on the planet what the greatest father looks like mm -hmm. through his family mm -hmm. that lives the way he wants us to live. You know, I have many dreams and he cares about all of them. When we delight in him, he gives us the desires and dreams of our heart, but we mustn't make them an idol. Mm -hmm. But you know what's happened to me? And maybe you say, well, it's just because you've gotten older and you're, 76 now, but I'm going to tell you where I am, Lisa. I only have one dream now. I want to see his dream fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I want to see the desires of my father's heart fulfilled for his family, yeah. through his family. That they might be one. And I have mm -hmm. absolutely, exactly, mm -hmm. I have absolutely been caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, when you really want that, you know what he said to me? I just love to share my dreams with somebody who really cares about my dreams mm -hmm. and my desires. And I'm telling you to everybody in the studio and everybody watching, we're here on God's earth, God's garden, to fulfill his dreams, his desire, and his vision. Father, I pray we'll do it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say thanks to Lisa for blessing us? <laughs> Lisa, you've been with us. You've been with us many times to the mission fields, mm -hmm. and they really work. Mm -hmm. And these viewers, the ones that make them all happen, yeah. we can thank God for the missionaries that leave their comfort to go into suffering, to offer hope and life and a future, freedom. But you're the ones that enable them to be there. You're the ones that enable them to stay there. You're the ones that make all the vehicles possible. You're the ones that make all the resources and the food possible. And right now we're in mission feeding. And boy, we need a miracle. I want you, I want you to listen. And I want you to hear God. Not just through what missionaries say or do, but what he wants to do through you for his kingdom purpose. Watch prayerfully. The death of one's child has been described as something that lives with a parent forever. For mothers like these, the death of one child is something they have not long forgotten because they have experienced the loss of multiple children. <laughs> For me, it's difficult to fathom, and I think you'll find the same thing, that it just blows your mind to actually understand what the people of this village have gone through. You know, the house just behind me and the family that's there, they've buried three children, three children in the last year. The devastating reality is children's deaths in Southern Africa are continuing to occur from the simple fact their mothers do not have enough food for them. This is a mother 
who lost this little girl's twin and two other children, the age of three, six, and eight in January this year because of something as simple as just not being able to get enough food to feed her family. What do we do about, how do you stop this death? How do you stop a village from like this, from burying child after child? How do you stop the pain and suffering that these families go through? Because let me explain something to you. These are children who when they die, their mother and their father, a piece of their heart dies as they bury their child. What do we do, you say? It's simple. We bring mission feeding to this village and we save this village children's lives. That's Isak Pretorius, Peter and Ann Pretorius's son. And he's just a treasure. He's uh, an example of God's love through a yielded missionary. And Betty, we see those beautiful mothers with the broken heart and those little children that are really the greatest treasure in their life. They don't have great means and enjoyment and pleasures like we do. Their family is their pleasure. And it's their joy. And they're such awesome moms. Hard to imagine how much pain they feel just because they can't give their child something they need. But we can. And Betty, our, our, our viewers have literally helped us save over 15 million children and people's lives that were desperate like that. That's not an exaggeration, that's a fact. And we've led far more people than that number to Christ in those areas because they've seen the love of God. And they want to hear about the God of this love and how to know Him through Christ. So Betty, I'm believing every viewer watching today is going to make a gift to help us feed 350,000 children right now that we have found that need our help. Gifts of 30, 50, or $100 feed three, five, or 10 children. Betty, what do you long to see everybody watching us do right now? You know, as I watched that along with you, my first response was, thank you, Jesus, that you have given me an opportunity to give of myself, to give of you, and to give hope to those mothers that love their children as much as we love our own children. Thank you, God, that I can reach out in love and support to feed these precious little ones that need an opportunity to run around and play and be children like God created them to be. So please join with us. Let's be that blessing. Let's be that hope for this mother. Father, I ask you to touch every heart right now and they'll respond to the love in Jesus' name. Would you go get your bank card and know I'm going to use it like a check? Or if you write a check, just know I'm going to make a check to life because that's what I'm giving. But get your bank card and go online or dial the number that's there as a prayer line and say, here's my gift of $30, 50 or $100 to feed three, five, or 10 children for the next months. Will you do that right now, please? Just go and get it and know that the moment you put that gift in the mail and we let the missionaries know the help you pray for, that those parents, those mothers long for, that those children desperately need is on the way. You're going to meet the need joyfully. We have some beautiful gifts to send you. The Global Impact Bible is, is really quite phenomenal. We have the journal too. But for those of you who help us with 10, this, this Bible shows you in the Word all the different events and people that have been affected by the Word of God. They were not necessarily great Christians or leaders or preachers, but they were impacted by the Word of God and it impacted everything around them. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal book. We also have the beautiful bronze of a mother's strength. These precious ladies not only go and get the water or the load, but they so often are carrying a child, sometimes more than one, and leading others. Beautiful example of the Father's love through these mothers. And we're sharing the Father's love when we give them life and hope. Thank you so much for making that call. Thank you for the gift. Mission Feeding began with a promise to be there in times of crisis for thousands of hurting and hungry children in their time of need. 
Now more than ever, we need your help to save lives by feeding and caring for children across the continent of Africa. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish our supplies to reach the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Your gift of love can be the miracle answer to a desperate mother's prayer. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 that will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. With your gift, we'll send you the Global Impact of Life Journal. This soft cover journal includes pictures from the mission field and inspiring scriptures as a reminder of your impact in giving to bless lives around the world. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Global Impact Bible. This English Standard Version presents a fascinating guide to the impact of the best-selling book of all time, filled with quotes from well-known figures, photographs, and reproductions of fine art. It highlights the many surprising ways Scripture has shaped civilization. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, A Mother's Strength. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. You know, I really feel like we've been blessed this week to have Lisa with us. Like I told you, and you've heard if you listen to her, she's been kind of with us all over the world sharing Jesus. This is phenomenal. I pray everyone watching will help us feed a child. $30, 50 $100, whatever you can do, 1000 if you can do it, because we're 100 kids need your help. And we're sending you some incredibly beautiful gifts that'll bless you. But if you'd like to have Lisa's book strong, guarantee it'll bless you. And you say, James, we're, we're going to help you feed those kids. Would you send us Lisa's book? Yes, we will. Would you join us to say thanks to Lisa again? And thanks to God. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. You know how much we love you. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Great day. Thanks for your help. I don't just want people getting into the Bible, nor the Bible getting into them. I want the Bible coming out of them. Mark Moore helps us know the Bible better tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.